Who likes free games? I like free games, and I've got like hundreds of them on Steam. I'm sure most of you do as well, because we've all played mobile games, and none of us are going to pay for a mobile game, right? Well, today is about another, uh, free game. The catch? Your soul. Okay, sorry, I mean your online data. Basically. Your soul. Anyways, you can get this game for free through the Behavior website if you're seeing this, and haven't played the game, because honestly, for a game that's free, or basically $5, it's worth a play. Anyways, this will be a quick guide on how to beat the game on max difficulty. Without friends. Yeah, this game's intended to be played with friends, but does in fact have a solo mode if you want the game to be insanely harder than it's intended to be. The game is not at all made to be played solo, so just be prepared to lose a lot unless you get good RNG with perks early on so that you're able to snowball into the late game. With that out of the way, we're going to pick Dwight, because while some of his perks are mid and his early damage is low, he scales really hard. And if you get lucky with the final boss like I did, it'll be smooth sailing after you get the perks that you need. The main strategy that you want to do for every character is get the two generators on the platforming section immediately, as the enemies that will inevitably stack up on there will be extremely annoying. Then you want to pinpoint and locate the last three gens, and go for the furthest gen to the closest gen from the exit door. For Dwight's abilities, he has his main attack, the Orbs of Destruction, that shoot three orbs and have splash damage. His secondary ability is his Ball of Instability, that deals high damage, but is a slow moving orb. And his final ability is the Doppelganger Decoy, that summons a decoy, wow who would have guessed, that causes enemies to be distracted and therefore attack it. Each of these abilities has great synergy with each other, and if you find a time to use them, go for it. That's the basic strategy going into this guide, now I'm going to explain the power-ups that I end up with so you can get a feel for how much RNG is involved. Anyways, I end up with the following power-ups. Range Frailty. It's not the greatest power-up, as most of the ranged enemies aren't that much of a hassle compared to their melee counterpart. Soothing Waters. This power-up is honestly terrible. It's only usable on Feng Min with her healing ability, but beyond that, it just cuts down the time when in a safe zone by like 3 seconds. Speedrunning tech, right? Critical Tempo. For other characters, this perk is kinda meh, but on Dwight, once you get multiple duplication abilities, this power-up starts to shine due to each shot 100% guaranteeing a critical hit at higher levels. Assuming you hit your shots. Elite's Frailty. A large number of enemies spawn as an elite variation, so it's a decent power-up. Melee Resistance. At first glance, this perk seems kinda whatever, but trust me, in the later parts of your run, Knocker Moths are going to be the bane of your existence, and thus this power-up will make life ever so slightly more bearable. At the end of this floor, I go for the Retaliation skill. It's like C tier, and for the defense it's good, but its secondary property of dealing damage when getting hit sucks, as its damage scales horribly late game and isn't worth it. Only pick this up when you have nothing else. Leader Kill. Since elites spawn constantly, the damage up from this is pretty good. Blintless Dash. Dash cooldown rate is alright, and a helpful bonus. Cape of Hovering. At first this perk seems kinda mid, but if you know how exactly how to use it when paired with the double jump, it becomes really helpful with dodging enemy attacks and skipping most platforming sections. Pact of Power. Now this? Oh boy, this is really good. Arguably the second best upgrade in the entire game, with the first one being the 100% blood points power up. 100% damage up just by taking half your health, that is a steal right there. Spring Legs. Mid power up. Jump height does not matter at all due to double jump doing what this power up can never accomplish. Ultra Orb. Honestly, it's a B tier skill. The actual ability itself isn't that amazing in its own right, however the added extra second of stun is what makes this ability really good on bosses, because pair it with the doppelganger decoy ability and the boss will almost never be able to hit you due to either being distracted by the decoy or stunning it with the ball after the decoy disappears and repeating the cycle. Critical Tempo 2, it's just like Critical Tempo 1, but it's better. Elite Frailty 2, same thing as I just said. Ring of Healing, alright. In my personal opinion, one of the most important power-ups in the late game. Because of the amount of enemies and with the damage they deal, this power-up is surprisingly clutch whenever you need the healing. Melee Resistance 2, much like Melee Resistance 1. Ranged Frailty 2, from the makers of Ranged Frailty 1. Retaliation 2, much like the latter. Alrighty, shenanigans aside, on to Boss 1. The Dicer is a unique boss in the sense that it's just melee and does absolutely nothing interesting at all. This boss just spins and is basically like our funny Beyblade Man. For Dwight, I would recommend using the decoy, and once it's expired, you have the Ultra Orb skill to use, and sun it as your decoy recharges from its cooldown. Rinse and repeat, and this boss should be a piece of cake. It's one of the easier bosses in the game, and most people should struggle with it. Unless you're me and you die a couple times, but whatever. Explosion. A tier early game, but S tier late game. This is one of the most important skills in the game because it allows Dwight to create insane splash damage to enemies due to the explosion range buff. The damage is also nice too, despite being kind of 5%. Vitality buff, it's a health up. Nice to have, but not the best in the world. Springling's dose, because we're Spanish now. Critical Tempo Trace, because we're still Spanish. Generator's discount, solid power up all around, especially at higher levels. Momentum buff, it's not really noticeable until higher levels, so kind of a mad power up. Duplication, S tier skill, this is hands down the best skill Dwight can have. And this power up is ultimately what helps him snowball so hard into late game, and the reason why I decided to go with him, unlike the other two characters. Melee Resistance 3. Spike resistance. 
It's meh, probably one of the worst versions of the resistance categories. Range frailty too. Fast second, quite good on Dwight, especially paired with the Ultra Orb skill to stun enemies. Critical damage buff. First off, very unique name. Second, this is a solid power up. Nothing terrible about extra crit damage. Duplication two, much like duplication one, but two, and not like three. Attack up, it's a damage up, what more can I say? Range resistance, it's a damage down, but for enemies. Lava resistance, if you die to lava, there's probably a reason why you need this power up, or this guide. Momentum buff two. Mana flow, crazy perk for the DPS value as it applies to all abilities, including your main attack. Duplication three. And onto boss two, the bull slug. All he does is just try to ram into you and that's really about it. Just be mindful of the smaller bull slug enemies when jumping out of the way, as those can disrupt your timing and make you take unnecessary damage. Just spam the decoy ability and stun him if he's about to hit you. Lasting eyes, basically free damage. Rock defense, Lech. <laughs> Safeguard, great defensive power up. Lava resistance two. Pristine Assault, quite good if you have the Ring of Healing, as that's just free damage. Soothing Waters 2, Blasting Eyes 2, Rock Defense 2, Spring Legs 3, Generator's Discount 2, Leader Kill 2, Elite's Frailty 3, and for the upgrade at the end of the floor, I went for Explosion 2. Range Resistance 2, Soothing Waters 3, Improved Critical Odds, finally, Improved Crit Odds, it's a solid power up. Generator Discount 3, Airborne Buff, as you're going to be constantly jumping to dodge attacks, having a small bonus is quite helpful. Manifestation. Terrible. Awful. Do not take this. However, I did, purely for the final boss. Although the other one would have been better. Boss 3. The Swarmer is very easy. This is the perfect run, the perfect RNG for the perfect final boss. You should be able to win this if you got this far. To the people still here, thanks for checking out this guide. I figured someone would have to be the guy on the internet dumb enough to sell their soul to behavior and make a video on a game that likely won't get updates or have any relevancy, so might as well be me. Guides are awful for audience retention, but if you'd like to see any of the other crazy projects that we're working on, feel free to stick around. There's also a Patreon if you feel inclined to spend money on some random furry on the internet, which is much appreciated. Also kind of dumb of you, but hey, I'll take your money. The rest of the links are in the description, and with all that said, I'm going to get the fog out. Have a good one, y'all.